Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about five causes of a low TSH. And this is actually really important because most doctors use only the TSH to determine if your thyroid is working. But as you are about to soon find out, there are many conditions which can sort of mimic a state of hyperthyroidism, but you're actually in a hypothyroid state. So what they do is they basically render the TSH less effective and less of a diagnostic tool. So if your doctor has only been ordering this test, you are not going to have a clear picture on what is happening in your body. So with that in mind, let's talk about the most common causes of a low TSH, what it means, and why you, at the very end, we'll talk also about why you need to get more labs tested to better understand your situation. So first of all, let's talk really what the T, about what the TSH is. I know many of you listening to this know at least what TSH is um, conceptually, but maybe they don't understand completely how it fits into your body. So the TSH is a lab test that doctors use to diagnose thyroid problems, and it stands for thyroid stimulating hormone. And it is a hormone produced in the brain by the pituitary gland, which then transmits and is supposed to go down to the thyroid gland, which is in your neck, and, to, and it tells your thyroid to produce more thyroid hormone, okay? That's how your body regulates how much thyroid hormone should be produced at any given time. So the brain communicates with the thyroid gland, and then the hormone is supposed to be pumped out um, when it's stimulated. Now, there isn't like a an opposite a hormone to the TSH. It's either the TSH is on or the TSH is off or somewhere in between. Okay. That's how the body really regulates thyroid function. So most doctors think, oh, I know if I just check the TSH, I'll have an idea of how well the brain and the thyroid are communicating. And then I'll know how much thyroid hormone to give this person or how much they're producing naturally or so on. It sounds good in theory, but there are a lot of problems that you'll soon find out as we go through each of these causes. So number one, the number one cause, I would say probably most common cause of a low TSH, um, meaning uh, not having enough of that TSH. So when you, when you get your labs checked uh, and you look at your blood, that TSH is lower than it should be normal. So probably the number one cause is hyperthyroidism. And that may make sense to you. So hyperthyroidism just means that your body is producing too much thyroid hormone. So what happens is, as your thyroid is producing thyroid hormone, it's telling the brain that we don't need any more. So the brain says, okay, I know, I'll drop the TSH. So TSH is dropping, and it's a, that drop in TSH is supposed to tell your thyroid to say, to, to stop producing thyroid hormone. It's trying to say, hey, slow down, we don't need that much anymore, um, we're good. But the problem in hyperthyroidism is the connection between the brain and the thyroid gland is disrupted. So the brain is saying slow down, but the thyroid is going and going and going and going. And that's what's called endogenous hyperthyroidism. Basically what's happening is your, that connection between your brain and your thyroid has been hijacked and your thyroid has just gone uh, rogue and it's just producing way too much thyroid hormone and you're in a state of excess um, thyroid hormone, otherwise known as hyperthyroidism. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism, the true state of hyperthyroidism, is an autoimmune disease called Graves' disease. Um, and it's basically where a antibody sticks onto a certain part of the thyroid gland and stimulates it as if it was th TSH, but it isn't. It, it looks similar, but it isn't. So the thyroid says, oh, I, I guess it's time to be stimulated. So it just pumps out a ridiculous amount of thyroid hormone and you end up symptomatic. Now, the good news is it is very hard to miss because people who have hyperthyroidism, they are symptomatic, okay? If you have true hyperthyroidism, then you will experience the symptoms of hyperthyroidism. And that includes things like being jittery, being anxious, having tremors, losing weight, having bone loss, having hair loss, having diarrhea. All of these symptoms indicate that there's too much thyroid hormone in your body. Now, these symptoms are very important because you're going to have other things, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, which cause a low TSH, but they don't cause those symptoms. So they're not quite the same thing which brings us to number two. Number two is thyroid medication, okay? This includes any type of thyroid medication, by the way. In fact, I often hear from thyroid patients, they'll say, oh, well, everybody knows that uh, NDT or armor thyroid is supposed to suppress your thyroid hormone, to which I'll respond, mm, it, it will have a suppressive effect on your thyroid hormone, but it's not always gonna drop it to zero. That is a dose-dependent effect, okay? So in other words, let me simplify. Thyroid medication that you take by mouth depending on how much you take, will have a suppressive effect on the TSH production in your brain. So if you took a small amount of armor thyroid, it wouldn't have a large suppressive effect and your TSH may be high. But if you took a big amount of any thyroid hormone, level thyroxine, synthroid, armor thyroid, nature thyroid, cytomel, doesn't matter, any medication, if you took a high enough dose, it will completely shut off the connection between your TSH and your thyroid gland. So you can imagine that your doctor, and this happens to about 20% of people, by the way, just randomly throughout their life, uh, doctors will accidentally give patients too much thyroid hormone, okay? And that often will resort, result in a suppressive effect on the TSH. Now, a lot of people will say, um, look, 
the if your TSH is low and you're taking too much and you're taking thyroid medication, then you're in a state of hyperthyroidism. So they say the true hyperthyroid state, like we talked about previously related to Graves, is the same thing as having a low TSH related to taking thyroid medication. And that is not true. Okay. Just because you are taking thyroid medication and your TSH is low or even suppressed does not mean that you are hyperthyroid. Okay. There are still many people who take uh, high amounts of thyroid hormone who have a low TSH, but have the symptoms of hypothyroidism, not hyperthyroidism. So, but there are also people who take too much thyroid medication who have hyperthyroid symptoms and they are hyperthyroid. So what you really have to look at, the way to differentiate between these two states, low TSH and hypothyroid symptoms or a low TSH and hyperthyroid symptoms are your symptoms, okay? So you have to pay very close attention to what you are feeling. If you are not feeling hyperthyroid, you're, you're not losing weight, you're not having bone loss, um, you're not uh, jittery, you're not having tremors, you're not having a rapid heart rate, you're not having heart palpitations, then you are not hyperthyroid. A hyperthyroid state is associated with hyperthyroid symptoms. Okay, I want to make that very clear. But it is true that taking thyroid medication can drop that TSH. Okay, that's that's definitely shown to be true and it's proven. Okay, so that's not disputable. Number three would be pituitary problems. Okay, so if you remember in the very beginning when we first talked about this, I mentioned that the pituitary gland is the organ that produces TSH. So now imagine to yourself, imagine you have a problem with that gland itself that's in your brain. Well, if the gland doesn't work, then you're not going to be able to produce TSH, okay? And that, then it's going to look like you're in a hyperthyroid state. This is why you never just use the, T, the TSH, by the way, because if your pituitary gland can't produce it, well, then guess what's going to happen? It's not being produced, right? So it's not stimulating your thyroid gland. So guess what's going to happen to your thyroid hormone? It's going to drop. So you're going to have a low TSH. You're going to have low thyroid hormones and you're going to have hypothyroid symptoms. But if your doctor doesn't know any better and doesn't order the right test, they're going to look at you and say, oh, you're hyperthyroid. And you're like, what are you talking about? I'm gaining weight. I'm losing hair. Um, you know, I'm constipated. I have cold intolerance. You have all the symptoms of hypothyroidism with a low TSH. And that's because you don't have thyroid gland problems. You have a pituitary problem. Now, one of the ways you can check for pituitary problems to differentiate between some of these conditions is by also looking at other hormones that the pituitary gland produces. And that includes your sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone um, and so on. So you can look at those hormones to determine if you have a pituitary problem um, as well as other hormones like in the hypothalamus such as TRH. Now, pituitary problems are not very common, but they definitely do happen. In fact, there's a lot of people that will leave comments and they'll say, hey, what about if you have pituitary hypothyroidism? These are people um, that have that very issue. The pituitary just isn't able to produce that TSH, therefore it's going to be low, but so are your thyroid hormones as well. So you have to understand that there are two different states and two different places that you can have problems. And by the way, this is a very confusing state because if your doctor believes that a low TSH is always hyperthyroidism, then they're gonna look at you as if you're hyperthyroid when you're really not, you're actually hypothyroid. So that's pituitary problems, which is number three. Number four, believe it or not, is lab anomaly. And what I mean by this is you actually have inaccurate labs. So most patients don't realize this, but there is actually about a three to 5% error rate among lab tests. So that means about one in 20, maybe you know one in 30 or so of the lab tests that you get are just not going to be accurate. They're not gonna be a representation of what is happening inside of your body. And let me tell you a little story. So when I first got, before I went into medical school, I was working at a lab test and I would run labs all day. I would run CBCs and CMPs and urinalysis and things like this. I would do this all day. And I would see over time that our machines would become a little more inaccurate. So, you know, throughout the day, you would see these values just slowly creeping up and we would get phone calls from the doctor and say, hey, is this a real lab test? Or, you know, is this a real result? Um, because they're looking at their patient and they're saying, hey, he looks fine, uh, but the lab is telling me one thing, but the, but the patient uh, doesn't look that way. And so what they were figuring out is there were issues with, with the equipment, not with the, the users, but with the equipment itself. Um, and it needed to be controlled and regulated and so on. But this happens very frequently. In fact, the rate is about three to 5%. So if you are somebody who is feeling completely normal and you check your one lab test, or let's just say you check your TSH in addition to everything else, and you look at it and it doesn't make sense, it's probably because the lab is just inaccurate. Go get it retested. Do not let a doctor put you on medication or change your therapies around because of one isolated lab test when you don't have the symptoms to back that abnormal lab test up. Just get it rechecked. Now, if you get it rechecked and it turns out it is abnormal again, that's another story. It's probably not um, an anomaly in the labs because the statistical chance that that occurred twice in a row is incredibly small. It's still possible, but very, very, very small. 
So just remember, most lab anomalies result, um, they don't make sense with the clinical picture. They don't look, you as a patient do not represent what's on the paper itself. So there's a, there's a difference between those two things. So pay attention to that, it does happen. And a lot of times if you get a CBC and a CMP, um, you get you know some basic hormones, you're getting plenty of lab tests that you can, you can pretty much guarantee that one to three of those are going to be inaccurate just based off that three to 5% number. So it does happen quite a bit. And I've actually seen it many times as well, just to put that in perspective. So the last cause that we're gonna be talking about, that was number four, this is number five, you may have something called euthyroid sick syndrome. Now, euthyroid sick syndrome is more of like a response from the thyroid gland itself um, in response to certain conditions. So in the case of acute illness, you may have changes to your thyroid gland, and this may also occur in chronic illnesses. And this is one of the, the reasons why doctors will never check your thyroid gland when you are hospitalized, because they know if you have like a pneumonia, or let's say you're in the ICU, or you're just sick for whatever reason, and you're inside of the hospital, your thyroid gland is going to respond to that condition. Now, it's felt probably that your, your body is doing this as a protective mechanism, right? It's trying to protect your body because you don't necessarily need to grow your hair when you're fighting a life-threatening infection like a pneumonia, right? So the thyroid is going to respond to that situation. It's going to pull resources and energy away from certain areas of your body and push it towards those things that matter, such as your immune system, fighting off infections, you know, having a fever response or whatever it is. It's making sure that you have blood flow to certain organs in your body. Your body is going to allocate resources differently when you are sick. And what that does is that impacts your thyroid lab test. So that's, again, why doctors know better than to check your thyroid while you're in the hospital, because when they do, it's gonna always look abnormal for this reason. And it has a name, it's called euthyroid sick syndrome. Now, doctors know this when you're in the hospital, but what they fail to remember is that this can also be caused by chronic medical conditions as well. So what ends up happening to a lot of patients, perhaps even you listening to this, is you have chronic medical conditions. You have things like high blood pressure, you have things like high cholesterol, maybe you have other autoimmune diseases, maybe you're taking medications for all these things, including acid reflux or whatever it is, right? You just have this list of medical symptoms or medical conditions, and you're taking medications for it, right? But these things are all having a toll on your body each and every day, and your thyroid is going to respond to all of these medical conditions. And it happens to respond via the brain, via the pituitary gland, which then impacts your thyroid lab test. So people who have euthyroid sick syndrome end up with a low TSH, right? That's the topic of our conversation today. They end up with a low TSH, a low TRH, which comes from the hypothalamus, and they have low free T3 and free T4 levels. But in addition, they also tend to have a high reverse T3 level. So what this is telling us is that the body is sort of again, allocating resources to those, thing, to those things which it deems is more important than let's say your weight and your ability to grow hair and your ability to you know, maintain your eyelashes and your eyebrows and so on because it senses a bigger problem. And this thing has a name and it's called euthyroid sick syndrome. Now, many patients have this and don't know they have it and their doctor, when they order a TSH, um, they'll look at it and say, oh my gosh, you're, you're actually hyperthyroid um, even though you feel completely hypothyroid. And the reason for this discrepancy is because you actually have euthyroid sick syndrome. So what this syndrome does is it makes you look hyperthyroid when you are not hyperthyroid. In fact, you are hypothyroid. So it's really important to understand the differences between all of these low TSHs and what they mean for your body. So if you know me and if you've seen my videos before, then you know that I'm a big advocate of getting a complete thyroid lab panel. And we have to talk about it in this context because one of the ways that you can differentiate between all of these conditions is by getting more than just the TSH. So this is what I often say, if you are going to a doctor and your doctor is only willing to order the TSH, it's probably time for you to get a new doctor because they're going to be missing all of these other conditions that I just mentioned. And they may not be relevant to you, but they might be as well. So if you're somebody who's having problems getting the treatment you need, it might be because you're not getting the rest of these tests. So what do you wanna get? Well, you need to get the TSH, it's still important to get, but in addition, you wanna get your free T3 and free T4 thyroid levels so you can see what's happening with thyroid hormone. That will help you understand is the TSH related to the brain? Is it related to, are you just producing too much? Where is that extra thyroid hormone coming from if it exists? Or if it doesn't exist, why aren't you producing it? So you need the free, free T3 and free T4. You should also get your reverse T3 lab test, and that can help differentiate uh, between euthyroid sick syndrome and other causes of hyperthyroidism. I also recommend getting your thyroid antibodies as well. And this will tell you if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which would be a cause of potential um, hypothyroidism or even hyperthyroidism in little episodes as well, because Hashimoto's can cause both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. So you need to make sure that you know whether or not you have this condition. So the, the idea of testing the TSH is a good one, and it's something that you should be looking at, but it should never be looked at in isolation because you're not gonna get the complete picture. Instead, you wanna get the TSH with all these lab tests, and that will help you determine what the heck is going on inside your body. 
So if you have any questions about that, let me know, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to those. Um, and if you haven't already, make sure that you download my free thyroid PDF resources. I have tons of information all designed to help thyroid patients like you feel better. So if you haven't, make sure you get those in the link below. And that's all I have for you guys today. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.